John Burko is with us. John Burko, former MP and former Speaker of the House of Commons. Adil, good morning to you. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Join us, John. I mean, what does this... What, what, damage does this do to politics and government and the House that you were in control of for so many years? I mean, you know, we have these things called the Nolan Principle. We've been in this situation before where there have been accusations of people in public office. So what John Major at his time came out with this thing, the Nolan Principles, which is quite, quite simple. They talk about things like accountability, mm. openness, honesty, leadership. If people at the seven very top... Seven key principles, seven, which most members of the public yes. would think would we'll just, actually be inherent I mean, they should, and I mean, the fact that we even have down. to have them. Yeah, yeah quite. Yeah. But this is how damaging it is, isn't it? If, if those principles are not being followed, mm. then we have a problem. In years gone by, people would have resigned. Yes. Oh, it inflicts reputational carnage on everybody involved in politics and on the House of Commons in particular. I think the significant difference between the John Major era and now is this. Yes, there was all sorts of wrongdoing during the latter stages of John Major's premiership, but nobody ever thought that John Major was a person of anything but unimpeachable integrity and straight dealing. Mm. Now, the person who is in charge of the ship is regarded as a serial dissembler, as an habitual liar, as somebody who has made his career through ducking and dodging and diving mm. and dissembling and deceiving people. That's the difference, and that is why it is so incredibly serious and enormously damaging. I'm sorry to say it, but I've known 12 Prime Ministers in my lifetime, and by a country mile, Boris Johnson is the worst. His natural instinct is not to be open, not to be transparent, not to be accountable, but narcissistically to think, what suits me? How can I extricate myself from this awkward situation? By what means can I arrogate blame somewhere else? This is way below the standard that the British public are entitled mm. to expect. And when people say, well, isn't it important that we focus on the big issues rather than on wallpaper or the cost of a flat? I suppose the answer to that is this. If there isn't a basic level of trust in the most senior minister in the government, it's very difficult to mm. operate a democratic polity at all. That's the problem. This guy stinks in the nostrils of decent people. Mm. And you, of course, might well say that, some would say, because you've crossed the floor, you've joined the Labour Party, and, and so, therefore, you can look at the Conservatives now and feel free to criticise. If you were still in your Speaker position, which is partly kind of keeping control and sure. order and making sure principles are adhered to, what would you be thinking and wanting to happen now? Well, obviously, I wouldn't express myself with the force you and alacrity couldn't. that I've deployed you today. No, quite. But I'm doing my best now to <laughs> overcome my natural shyness, reticence, <laughs> and self abasement <laughs> and to tell you what I really think. But if I had been in the chair, certainly I would have wanted him to be candid, to be upfront, and to answer questions. Mm -hmm. And I regularly made the point that I expected the House of Commons to be treated with respect. Mm. And unfortunately, very often by Boris Johnson, it wasn't the mm. unlawful prorogation of Parliament, which mm. I publicly denounced at the time, being the most egregious example. My successor also has implored the Prime Minister mm. to respect the House, to tell the truth, to answer the question, and to acknowledge that okay. he, the Speaker, is in charge in the Chamber. The problem is this cuts across the Prime Minister's natural and instinctive sense that he is the person who should always have not merely his say, but his way. And what he's got to learn, however long it takes, is that he has to be accountable to the public. It's not about him having fun or doing what he wants or having an easy life. Mm. It's about him honouring his obligations as a public servant. Okay. And, and I'm sorry with to all say of this, that he doesn't. You're in your podcast where you can freak speak and absolute talk about power. Podcast. Absolute power. And that's a chance for you to air things that presumably you haven't years. What we miss is the way you say order. Yeah. Order! Where, <laughs> where did that come from? Did you, work in a, did you work in a restaurant or something? No, Don't well, work, I mean, I suppose the rather <laughs> prosaic and banal answer, Adil, to your question is that it comes from the diaphragm. I uh, said, <laughs> of course oh, it does. Well, yeah. we can tell. I mean, did I work in a restaurant? Well, no, I didn't work in a restaurant, but... <laughs> 
Look, I you thought that it was a very serious it. business. I didn't practice it in front of the mirror. No. It was rather <laughs> instinctive, as you could probably <laughs> see it now. So I very, instinctive. I very rarely had anything in front of me. I didn't. I mean, who uh, wouldn't say that instinctively? Well, like I didn't that, use a script. Well, I tell you what, I got a little bit of practice because we did have a cat, and our cat was named by my wife Sally yeah. on the basis of her conduct of a Twitter poll, and oh. the favourite name suggested in the Twitter poll was. Order. <laughs> so order. I frequently yelled order at our cat oh, in <laughs> our <laughs> on a daily basis. Give, just give us one more order, we'll let you go. Order! <laughs> oh, I'm more you telling you so. about the podcast with Deborah Francis White. <laughs> Many episodes to come yeah. in which I you hope can people. Order that podcast when come you don't get your podcast. Come back and talk from. more because you've obviously got lots of things to say and we love your podcast. So <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, <laughs> Thank you very All much right. indeed.